Good evening. Welcome to Resia, the research seminar in Islamic art. Tonight we have, uh, uh, we are lucky to have Dr. Darka Milic, hey. who is a research associate at the Institute of Art History in Croatia. And she actually is going to talk to us from Split. She graduated in art history and Italian language and literature at the University of Zagreb, where she also defended her doctoral um, thesis. She has participated in several research seminar and research associateships, including at the Getty Foundation, the Aga Khan Pro Program for Islamic Architecture at Harvard University, and also was a Berenson Fellow at Villa Itati in 2018, where she focused on the research of lodging and commerce in early modern Mediterranean in the light of cultural exchange. She has published extensively both in books and scientific articles, including the award-winning book, Engineers in the Service of the Venetian Republic, published in 2013. She is a leader and collaborator on research projects um, uh, of Institute of Art History and Croatian Scientific Foundation. And she focuses on the history of early modern architecture on the Eastern Adriatic coast, with special interest in exploring transfer of architectural forms between the two Adriatic coasts and with the Ottoman uh, influence. Her upcoming publications are on the questions of caravanserai in Bosnia and on the mechanism of mobility in the early modern world. And today Darka will talk to us about mobility on the borders of the empire, shared spaces of the caravanserais in Ottoman Balkans. I'm very happy to welcome you, Darka, and over to you. Oh, I just 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 say that as usual, um, uh, please uh, for the audience, please uh, write your questions or your points in the chat, and I will uh, uh, post them to Darka at the end of her seminar. And uh, Darka has uh, very kindly agreed to answer questions and points. So Darka, over to you, welcome. Thank you very much, Anna. Uh, I would like to thank, uh, first of all, to Professor Contadini for, and also to Tanya Tola for inviting me to present my research uh, to you. And also I would like to greet everyone who is here tonight for expressing their interest in my lecture. Um, let us begin. Let us begin uh, on the coast of the Adriatic Sea, um, on the Dalmatian coast, uh, where uh, Ragusa Road begins, and uh, then slowly after we're going to head into the hinterland of Balkan. Let me just uh, share my screen with you. You can see it? Yes, that's, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Studying the architecture of the Lazaretos on the Dalmatian coast, a complex of buildings where quarantine of travelers and merchants was conducted, as well as disinfection of goods, I discovered that in 1784, due to the high number of Ottoman merchants, who were coming over the land route from Ottoman Empire to the Lazaretto of Ragusa, the Senate of the Republic of Ragusa promulgated a regulation on the construction of lodging for the Ottomans, specifying that the new building had to emulate the form of Ottoman Han, a modo dei Hani Turchi, found on the territory of Bosnia. 
The provision specified that the rooms for the merchants were to be located on the upper floor, while the ground floor had to contain warehouses for goods and horse stables. This data prompted me to explore in more detail the architecture of Turkish Hans or caravanserais in the Ottoman territory of Bosnia and Yale, or present-day Bosnia, which is situated in the immediate hinterland of the Lenation coast, in order to reconstruct the appearance of these buildings and identify possible similarities with their possible counterparts built in early modern period in the suburbs of the nation cities. With the expansion of the Ottoman Empire in Europe in the 15th and 16th centuries, the Ottomans imported these institutions on the territory of their newly conquered province of Bosnia, bordering with the Venetian province of Dalmatia. The territory of Bosnia Pashadon was gradually, over the period of 200 years, integrated into the Ottoman Empire. This process started from the first confrontation with the Ottoman forces near Bileča in 1388 through 1463, the year of the fall of Bosnian Kingdom, to the fall of the city of Jajce in 1528 and Bihać in 1592. This period in Bosnian history is marked, marked by the Ottomanization of the conquered territory and by its intense urbanization. The process of Islamization and integration of Bosnian cultural traditions within the Ottoman Islamic norms lasted for at least the same amount of time. Socio-economic situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina during the Ottoman rule, primarily during the 16th century, was considerably changed in comparison to the earlier period. General economic growth in the province was preceded by urbanization carried out through the second half of the 15th and the whole 16th century. Caravanserais were, along with roads and bridges, one of the essential parts of commercial network and a tool of development for towns and regions that facilitated commerce and brought an influx of capital to the local community. Caravanserais as utilitarian structures became the nuclei of chains of benzils or stopping places. Located in theory one day journey apart in the mountainous Western Balkans, where caravans based on teams of horses were the norm and wheeled vehicles impractical and rare, a consistent system of purpose-built multifunctional halting places enabled overland traffic to thrive. Halil Nalchik emphasizes that in Bosnia and Herzegovina during the course of the 16th century, I quote, 232 inns, 18 caravanserais, 32 hostels, 10 bedestans, and 42 bridges were built, end of quote. They were built on newly conquered territory as a part of peace foundations established during the 15th and 16th century. The caravanserais and bridges relied on by travelers were not typically built on orders from the Sultan or coordinated by central agency by the majority of them were more, but the majority of them were more often the product of initiative of, of individual Ottoman local administrators. In the absence of a consistent central government in charge of the road construction in the provinces, the creation of the road infrastructure became the task of a number of local Ottoman officials. Jesse Howell concluded that, I quote, the large scale patronage of central authorities like Rustem Pasha and Soholu Mehmet Pasha concentrated on the central axis of Ottoman circulation, extending from Central Europe to the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea. In Western Rumelia, despite occasional projects like the bridge in Mostar and Trebinje, most road infrastructure was built through the decentralized individual peace actions of regional governors and local officials. The 16th century boom in architectural and infrastructural construction that transformed the Ottoman lands surpassed the logistical limits of the centralized system by harnessing the tremendous productivity of officials in the provinces acting on their own initiative 
through the instrument of Bucket. Rather than an infrastructural state, what emerges is an infrastructural class, a broad stratum of officials holding a range of an administrative positions for whom the building of bridges and caravans arise, plus innumerable mosques, medresas, hamams, markets, and water systems, was both a continuous practice, a pragmatic investment, and it would appear an unspoken obligation to the Ottoman dynasty." End of quote. In building these institutions, patrons were simultaneously furthering the aims of the state to populate and to urbanize, while performing a beneficent act for the betterment of their soul. The list of patrons whose peers and endowments served the needs of travelers in the province includes great dignitaries like viziers, local authorities like heads of the Sanjak of Herzegovina, the Ayalet of Bosnia, and lower status dignitaries and other wealthy people. But most of them were native born, as if they were as if they were much more aware of the local needs, possibilities of regional development, and willing to invest funds for their benefit and the benefit of this region. Among government officials, the Sokolo or Sokolovic family, originally from the territory of present-day Bosnia, stands out partially because their endowments are well-documented and researched and because members of this family have held high state, state, state duties in the province for decades. Sokolo Mehmed Pasha had been recruited for the Sultan service when he was 18 and promoted to the Grand Vizirate at the very end of Suleiman's reign. The Pasha maintained that post under the rule of the next two Sultans until he was stuck to death in 1579. He boasted a nepot nepotistic regime through his network of, of protégés, and he appointed his relatives on governorship positions in Bosnia and Herzegovina. These complexes span the empire, connecting Ottoman Hungary all the way to Syria, Mecca, and Medina. Sokolo family members improved communication and urban networks in these provinces by building numerous bridges, paved roads, caravansarais, and marketplaces. Grand Vizier Sokolu Mehmet Pasha built between 1572 and 1577 a bridge over Drina River in Visegrad, in the southeast part of Bosnia, designed by chief royal architect Sinan, just as Mehmet Pasha's now lost Karavasarai nearby. Most Mehmet Pasha endowments in Bosnia were concentrated along the so-called Ragusa Road, which connected Istanbul with Ragusa of present-day Dubrovnik, which had an important role in fulfilling the Ottoman court's request for artifacts by importing goods such as Murano glass and luxury textiles. One of the Grand Vizier's favorite relatives was his paternal cousin, Sokolu Mustafa Pasha, who served as a Sanja governor of Bosnia and subsequently as governor general of Buda, today's Budapest in Ottoman Hungary. As governor of Bosna Sanjak, Sokolu Mustafa Bey built in mid 16th century a mosque, mektep, caravanserai, bridge, hammam, mill, and many shops on an empty meadow, all of which were founded by his endowment, encouraging thus populating and the creation of a settlement. This settlement named Rudo very quickly has grown to become Kastavarupo, an important node in regional trade routes not far from Sokolu and Central Home. Another Mehmet Pasha cousin, Sokolu Ferhat Pasha, for example, built a large complex of buildings in Banja Luka, the capital of this Ottoman province, which was on a trade route that connected Bosnia with Ottoman Hungary and the Habsburg Empire. There, he built before 1587, among other buildings, a large caravanserai covered with lead. Rustem Pasha, who also originated from Bosnia, ascended to the position of Grand Vizier under Sule Sultan Suleiman, among other peers, foundations, and income producing properties, commissioned five stone bridges in Sanjako, Bosnia, 
that were accompanied by paved roads, a caravanserai, a thermal bath, a public fountain, and a bedestand. The only one still existing is the bedestand in Sarajevo. Built in 5051, this bazaar has a quadrangular layout and it is covered with a sixth hemispheric, hemispherical dome. It is known as the Bedestan of Bursa because it specialized in the sale of Ottoman silk made it at Anatolian city. Word Han and Caravanserai in the local language are synonymous. To denote this type of building historically, in the local language was used exclusively the word Han, and only recently the word Caravanserai began to appear. However, in founding documents, these terms are arbitrarily used, and they do not distinguish them in any way. Therefore, I will do the same during this presentation. According to the functions they serve, Hans could be divided into those situated alongside the trade route that were used by travelers for short-term breaks and those for commercial purposes situated in larger commercial centers where merchants would stay for a longer period of time, buying and selling their goods. The simplest architectural form of Han, without a courtyard, predominated on the territory of the Ottoman Bosnia and could have been located both at intersections, outside urbanized areas, and inside of the settlements. All known examples of this type of Han were built in the second half of the 16th century and in the 17th century. According to Hamdia Kreseljakovic, this type of Han had the form of a large barn. It had a rectangular plan with circumferential walls made of wood or stone, a roof covered by shingles, and a high enough entrance for a horseman to ride through. The main characteristic of this type of Han was that the traveler and his horse shared the same sleeping quarters. The only surviving example of this type of building in Croatia is the monumental stone inn of Vizir Yusuf Pasha Mashkovic in Vrana, which, although never fully completed, is the largest still surviving complex of Ottoman architecture in Croatia. A small place in the hinterland of the city of Zadar, Vrana came under Ottoman rule in 1537. During the war, the inhabitants of this fertile area withdrew to Zadar, and after Ottoman conquest, one of the first consequences was somewhere partial and somewhere complete change of population. It is known that the Ottoman, Ottomans through thoroughly restored and expanded the medieval settlement of Vrana after the conquest. According to the Ottoman description of the Bosnian Pashalo from 1620, Vrana was at that time a fortified town with more than 200 houses while Venetian sources from 1620 mention around 500 houses, several mosques, mektep, hammam, and water supply. The graphic of the settlement from the 17th century shows two mosques outside the fortress. Before the Ottoman conquest, Prana was a smaller fortress, but under Ottoman rule, it became an important fortification in this part of the region. The period of the Ottoman rule is, in an economic terms, a period of progress. By building an irrigational canal system, they turned the Vrana territory into a fertile valley where various agricultural crops were grown. Writers who describe Vrana point out that it was a garden of the Lika Sanjak. They mention fountains beside the governor houses, as well as the dense forest of olive groves. Yusuf Mashkovic Ahan is located not far from the medieval Templar fortress. Almost everything we know about the pattern of this building, Yusuf Pasha Mashkovic, derives from Venetian and other Western sources and actual data are mis mixed with legend. According to traditional history, Mashkovic was born in about 1604 in the Vrana region in a Christian family. 
he arrived at Istanbul as a boy in the service of Belkin Muslim. Legend has that Yusuf Mashkovic was a gardener at the court when he met and befriended the then imprisoned future Sultan Ibrahim I. After Ibrahim came to power, Yusuf progressed rapidly. In 1643, he became a silahar, a guardian of weapons of, at the Sultan's court, then vizier and imperial advisor. In 1644, he was appointed Kapudan Pasha, commander-in-chief of the navy, and then commander-in-chief of the Turkish army. At the beginning of the Kandian War in 1645, he led the Turkish military conquest of Crete, where, as Venetian chroniclers write, he showed chivalry and humanity during the siege and after the surrender of the capital, Tanya. Shortly after his return to Constantinople, for reasons not yet clarified, he was executed in January of 1646 by order of Sultan Ibrahim. At the height of his at the height of his power, in 1644, he summoned the governor of Rana to Istanbul and ordered him to build the Han. The construction began the same year and Venetian reports say that up to 500 workers worked at the same time on the construction of the Han. Venetians, alarmed with such great construction activity, in the summer of 1645, sent a state engineer to explore the construction site during the night. After the tour, Alberti drew the foundation and reported that Ottomans were not building a fort, but an inn, a building designed to accommodate a large number of travelers appeasing the Venetians. So you can see here on this, uh, on this drawing of engineer uh, Alberti, that there is a, a fortress um, on the left side. It's a fortress with the minaret. Uh, there are foundations also in the form of the letter E, foundations of the, he called it uh, Fundamenti del Ospizio, uh, of the inn. And on the right side of the drawing, you can see he denotes uh, the place where the Case di Durak Beg, the governor of Rana, uh, his houses, where his houses were. So very detailed, <laughs> not very detailed, but let's say we, we can uh, have a, a, an image of the, how Rana was looking like in uh, 1645. Uh, he was, uh, he was uh, appeasing the Venetians, who subsequently even approved an export of timber from their territory for the construction of the Han. Unfortunately, with Mashkovic's death, the construction of the Han has, was stopped and it was never completed according to the original project. The complex has a rectangular layout and the surface area of over 3,000 square meters. Its entire perimeter is enclosed with a high wall, almost without openings, up to seven meters high. It is built with exceptional finely cut stone blocks, unusual good quality work, even for the Dalmatian stone cutters of that time. The entrance gate, with the lintel in the shape of a segmental arch, is located in the axis of the building on the, no on the northeast side, leading to the large interior courtyard a defensive tower rose above the gate. The, buildings, the building beside the tower is a later addition without any prominent features of Ottoman architecture. Along the southeast wall, there are a number of rectangular accommodation rooms. Each square room has a fireplace and two wall cabinets and toward the courtyard, a door and a window. Judging by the remains of pointed arches in the upper part of the wall, the rooms were covered with walls or small domes. Previously, researchers identified these rooms as a Han, rooms intended for lodging of merchants and travelers. That is, the name Han, according to them, refers to this part of the complex in which travelers and merchants were to be accommodated. But I would argue 
that these rooms can be identified as a madrasa, consisting of six student rooms and one large room in the middle that served as a lecture hall. Medresa in Pochite, a town in Western Herzegovina on the road between Mostar and Dubrovnik, had a similar layout, with five rooms in a row for accommodation of pupils, each with a fireplace and a bigger room as a lecture hall. All rooms were covered with domes, and in front of the rooms, like in Mashkovi Chahan, there was a spacious porch, a typical feature of many medresas in Ottoman Herzegovina at that time. Opposite the madrasa, on the north side of the courtyard, are the remains of two buildings. The building in the corner is taller, without openings toward the courtyard, except for the door on the ground floor. Inside the building, there are traces of mezzanine structure from where a woman could have followed prayers. There are traces present on the walls that indicate that the interior was probably vaulted with the dome. Considering these architectural features and its layout and position opposite of a madrasa, this was probably a jamia or a mosque. A graphic from the middle of the 17th century, created during the time when Ograna was still under Ottoman rule, clearly shows in the right side the high walled building composed of a lace of at least two wings. Given its location in relation to the fortress and the settlement, it is probably a complex of Yusuf Mashkovic. At the corner of the complex in the foreground is a mosque vaulted with a dome without a minare. Although the mosque is shown leaning against the outer corner of the complex and with a round floor plan, which does not correspond to the real current state, it still give us, gives us confirmation that the present walls in the northeast east corner of the complex belong to the mosque. Both wings of the complex are shown covered with the roof and the main and only entrance to the complex is properly located on its north side. The lower building beside the mosque was a hammam. Pools had been established in the bathing area with a system of canals through which the steam is drained. Considering that mosque and hammam were connected with the opening, this space could have served also as an ablution area at some point in time. Today, the interior of the complex, entire complex is divided with the wall in two parts. In front of the centrally placed opening in this wall, which is the axis, in the axis of the main entrance of the complex, there is a pavilion opened up by arches on three sides that researchers previously have identified as Shedervan, a fountain given the remains of a stone canal below it. Behind the pavilion, we find the entrance to the rear part of the complex, which has so far, so far been interpreted as a part intended for the garden or the residence of the Vakrif himself. Yusuf Mashkovic when he would retire to his homeland. But by analogy with other Hans, primarily analyzing reconstruction of their original appearance and their descriptions, since almost none has survived, it is possible to conclude that this part of the complex was indeed a Han, intended for the lodging of travelers and merchants. On the perimeter walls of the void, a number of niches or fireplaces have been preserved. They are arranged in a regular rhythm and alternate with narrow window opening. This type of Han building was an extremely simple rectangular building that only had a ground floor and one big room. The roof with an open construction in wider Hans rested on a centrally positioned columns distributed in a regular rhythm along the entire length of the room, while horses and donkeys stayed in the same room as the merchants in the center of the room, there was a walled ele elevated platform along its lateral walls that surrounded the room, 
where merchants could sit and sleep next to their merchandise and light their fire in wool fireplaces. The same layout and architectural features had Shishman Ibrahim Pasha Khan in Pochitet, built in 1664. This 400 square meter Khan had a two meter meters wide stone platform attached to its lateral walls. In order to provide comfort to the travelers, the walls of this Khan also had fireplaces and niches. There are only few remains of the former Khan in Pochita left, but the vaulted stone gate positioned in the middle of a longer wall made of carefully worked stone protruding, protruding from the body of the building is relatively well preserved and shows similarities with the building of the Khan in Vrana. There was a Khan of similar layout also in Mostar, probably built in 1609 by an unknown Bakir. While no basis for pillars that should support the roof structure in the middle of the room were found in the Khan in Pochitel or Mashkovich Khan, a thread of, of, of octagonal pillars that supported the roof was found in Mostar and in another Khan of this type in the east of Bosnia, in the town of Dobrun, which was built as part of endowment of Ferhat Pasha Sokolovic in 1587, and also in settlement of Koni, according to the testimony of the French traveler Quinslet, who spent a night there in 1657 on his way from Dubrovnik to Belgrade. This type of Han, with a quite simple floor plan, could be located inside or outside city centers. In 1573, Philippe de la Canaille du Fres, a French diplomat on his journey from Venice to Istanbul, encountered this type of Khan on the first night after he left Dubrovnik in the town of Trebinje, some 30 kilometers inland from Dubrovnik. Although this Khan no longer exists and there are no physical remains of it, the description of De La Canais shows that it had the same form as the aforementioned Hans in Vrana, Pochitel, Mostar, and Dobrun. He described it as a large, uncomfortable barn that people and horses resided in together. I quote Raised platforms with fireplaces surrounded the room. The merchants arranged their merchandise and laid their bed, if they had one on the same platform. Otherwise, one, one lay on the pavement, for one must not think of finding any comfort in these caravanserais. The most beautiful ones are covered in lead like the mosques. Remark, end of quote. Remark about the roofing material is an important observation, sometimes the only one about the exterior appearance of the building that shows an implicit, excuse me, I lost one page. Oh. That shows an implicit understanding of the value and status of caravanserai. It also shows that the domes and their lead coverings was their most striking and distinctive feature for Western travelers. Two years after Philippe de la Canaille, Another Frenchman, Pierre Lescalopier, traveled the same road, and he also described the Han in Trebinje as a large barn. The Han had no additional floors, but was covered only by a roof, probably hip roof, a typical element in Ottoman architecture. And around the room, there was a raised platform on which the passengers slept. Instead of windows, he observed the only light that penetrated the interior 
was through loopholes. I would suggest that instead of loopholes, these are actually narrow window openings, the same wall openings there are in Han in Vrana. And I would argue that this is a security feature. Such narrow openings were probably necessary in order to prevent the theft of goods from the Han and to prevent unauthorized entry. Les Calopier noted that Hans built, were built one day walk away from each other and are often located far from the city and inhabited places. The Han manager was tasked with overseeing the movement of travelers in this border province. By inquiring about the identity and provenance of each traveler, leading to conclusion that caravans arise not only serve to enhance mobility, trade and settlement, but also to monitor and control mobility in this volatile frontier region. Les Calopier also notes that construction of caravan sarai in Trebinje was commissioned by already mentioned Grand Vizier Sokolu Mehmet Pasha, who wanted to improve travel conditions on the road from Istanbul to Ragusa by commissioning a bridge and caravan sarai complex commemorating his late son who died in 1572, so that travelers would pray for his soul. These structures were built between 1572 and 1574 by stone masons imported from Dubrovnik. Caravan in Trebinje doesn't exist anymore, but the bridge still stands, although it has been moved to another nearby location in Trebinje. Back to Mashkovic Ahan in Vrana. Phoenician documents from 1645 show that timber intended most likely for the construction of the roof of the complex, the Ottomans successfully procured from Venetian territory in agreement with the Venetian authorities. These data indicate a high degree of completion of parts of the complex in the summer of 1645, but also that the construction of such a large complex in the border area required the cooperation of authorities on both sides of the border. According to Mashkovic's plan, with the construction of service complex or Kilie, Vrana was to become an important halting place on new trading route on the Ottoman-Venetian border and provide the impulse for the growth of the town. But, but by force of historical circumstances, primarily due to the death of its pattern, and war clashes that took place in this area during the protracted Canadian War, this never actually happened. In the later half of the 15th century and during the 16th century, a different type of the Ottoman Han was built mostly in large tra trade settlements on the territory of Bosnia and Yale. This type of Han was a square in plan and it had buildings arranged along the perimeter walls that enclosed the central rectangular courtyard. Warehouses and shops were located on the ground floor, and the upper floor had residential rooms for merchants. Most of the openings looked to the central courtyard, in the center of which was usually located the water fountain and the masjid. Usually the complex had two entrances, one opposite the other, large enough for loaded horses to pass. A sizable area in the middle offered enough space for the handling of horses and the reloading of goods. There were at least four caravans arise with courtyards in Sarajevo, and they were all located in the Bershchashia district, the historical and commercial center of the city. Issa Beisakovic, the founder of Ottoman Sarajevo, built one of the oldest caravans arise on the territory of today's Bosnia in 1462. The construction of this Han, known as Golobar Ahan, was a key element in the founding of Sarajevosna or Sarajevo. Subsequently, located in Barshashia, a commercial center, it had a stable accommodation for 30 courses, four warehouses, and 40 rooms on the upper floor. Since, since it was built of wood and mud bricks, it was destroyed in the fire of 1937. 
and there is no detailed information about its appearance. Another courtyard, Caravanserai in Sarajevo, was Tashlihan, built through the endowment of Bosnian governor Gazi Husreb Bey in 1543. Tashlihan was the most monumental of all the caravanserais in Bosnia. It had a rectangular base and layout typical of all caravanserais built, built as two-story buildings and was constructed entirely of stone. Unlike other caravanserais in Sarajevo, in which the central courtyard was used for the loading and unloading of goods, Tashlihan's courtyard had a row of shops on the ground level, which characterized it as a commercial hunt. In the center of the rectangular courtyard was a fountain for water and masjid, a place for prayer, supported by pillars. From the courtyard, close to the main caravanserai entrance, there were two stone staircases leading to rooms and hallways on the top floor. The sleeping quarters were vaulted with small domes and hallways with barrel walls, and lead was used throughout as a roof cover. This caravanserai provided lodging for travelers and merchants and also functioned as a bazaar. Caravanserais in these border areas often serve also as bezistan, bazaars for the sale of imported goods, especially textiles, in the absence of separate buildings. Situated in the heart of trade center, they were often the focal points of social life, wherein news from distant locations was traded along with the goods and where first coffee houses were set up in the Bosnian territory in the 17th century. Toward the completion of Tashlihan between 1542 and 43, craftsmen were called from the nearby Republic of Ragusa. The merchants of Sarajevo sent a specific request to the rector of Dubrovnik for the dispatch of 30 stonemasons specializing in construction of walls, walls and domes. These masters were needed to complete the construction of the caravanserai. Stone masons were set to receive salaries, gifts, and travel expenses. The deviation from the use of the usual building material, timber, resulting in a need to import craftsmen and higher final construction costs, stems from the desire to build a fire resisting building. Fires often erupted in Sarajevo because most buildings were wooden and the streets were narrow, so the fire spread easily. It is evident from the letter that Bosnian builders were not adapt to building or building with stone. Traditional material available locally in Bosnia is timber, and most important caravanserais in Sarajevo, with central courtyard, except Tashlihan, were built partially of timber, taking advantage of abundant resources nearby. By substituting stone arcades with wooden pillars and thus eliminating the need for walls and domes and lead cover, these caravanserais gained local regional distinctive features. Morica Han, another caravanserai built in the heart of the Charsia district of Sarajevo, is an example of one of Han's built partially of timber. The Morica Han is the only surviving large commercial caravanserai in the region to almost entirely preserve its original form. The caravanserai, which housed 300 beds, was built as part of Gazikus Rebek's Vak in the late 16th century. For a number of years, it marked the center of the political and social life for artisans, merchants, and scholars. The caravanserai coexists of a ground and a first floor with a rectangular ground plan. While the top floor was constructed in wood, the ground floor was built in stone, partly because it could hold the weight of the top floor and partly as a protection against fire for the goods stored there. The central courtyard is mostly situated under the top floor, supported by a colonnade of oak columns, forming a porch inside encircling the space. This solution maximizes the capacity of the space as all four sides of the courtyard were thus full of shops and storage spaces. There was also a horse stable, which as in most other caravanserais of this type, is opposite the main entrance attached to the rear side of the building. The top floor was used for living quarters, 
with the layout completely independent of that characterizing the ground floor, precisely because of the use of timber as a building material that is much lighter than stone. There, a series of rooms are located on both sides of a wide central hallway. The exceptional white of the upper floor is possible because it is formed by leaning on a wooden porch on the ground floor. Two staircases located from far from one another led to the top floor. Like the other three large Sarajevo caravanserais, the Moricha Han had its own waterworks as well as the fountain with a cistern situated adjacent to the structure. The coffee house on the first floor of the caravanserai was the first coffee house opened in Bosnia immediately after the caravanserai was built at the end of the 16th century. Even the Jewish merchants, the Jewish community of Sarajevo settled there in the middle, in the mid 16th century, lived collectively in a separate building, which adhered to a caravanserai typology. A document from 1728 states that in 1581, the Aush Pasha, the Grand Vizier, ordered the construction of a separate large caravanserai for Jews living in Sarajevo. This building was a part of the Aush Pasha Vak, and residents of this uh, building were contributing to it by paying an annual rent. The building was constructed around the courtyard, but it had only one level and it was surrounded with a high wall. The aforementioned traveler, Pierre Lescalopier, who traveled the Ragusa Road in 1574 on his way to Istanbul, was struck by intercommunal mixture in this widespread Ottoman institution. I quote, it is a marvel that in the same caravanserai are found all sorts of people and nations, Arabs, Turks, Greeks, Jews, Armenians, Franks, and others, all lodged together as peacefully that no one complains about the other." End of quote. Les Calopier comments do not reflect the experience of all travelers, but Hans or Caravanserais were the shared spaces of the road in which immediate experience of actual cross-cultural contact, communication, and exchange took place. While on the territory of Ottoman Bosnia, the Hans hosted a constant exchange of diverse people and goods, on the nearby Christian territory, the Ottoman merchants were segregated in the state-organized housing. In coastal towns of Dubrovnik and Venetian Spalato, today split, because of great cultural and religious differences, that is because of the need to maintain order, security, and peace in this frontier region, Ottomans were obligated to reside outside the city walls but attached to them for the convenience of trade and the security offered by the city. As a matter of fact, the location of Ottoman lodging was usually attached to the city gate, close to the commercial district or marketplace, and beside the previously mentioned lazaretto. Comparing the functional and architectural characteristics of these buildings intended with Bosnian Hans, I concluded that the Ottoman Han model was used, used for their construction. In Dubrovnik, the Ottoman Han existed, according to some, as early as 1502. However, we know with certainty that the Han for Ottoman merchants was built pursuant to the Senate regulation in 1592. It was situated at the end or beginning of Overland Road that departed from eastern city gate eastward toward the Balkan hinterland. We know that the Han was subsequently extended, vaulted, and a store staircase was added in 1670. From existing photographs and cadastral maps from the beginning of the 19th century, and also this uh, drawing, we can conclude that the Han in Dubrovnik had the shape of a long single-story rectangular building covered by the gable roof. The southern, longer facade was perforated with only two tall arched entrances. Except for the entrances, there were no other visible window openings. The Hans form leads us to conclude that when they were constructing this building, the Ragusans were imitating a simpler 
type of Ottoman Han, the one without the central courtyard, like Grand Vizier's Mehmet Pasha Han in Trebinje, which was built only 20 years before, some 30 kilometers away. Unlike the Han in Pochitel or the Han in Vrana, the Han in Dubrovnik did not have a pronounced architectural entrance portal in the form of a porch or a hip roof, a typical element in Ottoman architecture. Although there has been a reduction in some elements, mostly decorative ones, the similarities with the Ottoman model are clear. In the last decade of the 16th and the beginning of the 17th century, town of Split on the territory of Venetian Dalmatia became a very important export port for Ottoman goods that were arriving all the way from the Middle East and were shipped for the markets of Venice and further on for Western Europe. The Jewish merchant Daniel Rodriga, the initiator of this new trade route in 1580, began the, the began the construction of a complex of buildings in Split, a future lazaretto, which was supposed to be the main facility for the reception of Ottoman merchants and the further distribution of their goods. The complex Rodriga was building would eventually assume the form of an Ottoman Han used in larger Ottoman trade centers, such as Banja Luka, Sarajevo and Skopje, to host merchant caravans. Rodriga, who spent much of his life traveling with Bosnia, was certainly familiar with the Hans. One can presume that Rodriga traveling through Ottoman territories as a merchant and making frequent, was making frequent use of Ottoman Hans, recognized their functionality and recre recreated it on the shores of the Adriatic Sea for the same purpose. Several architectural features of these multifunctional buildings corresponded to Rodriga's needs. Among those borrowed by Rodriga for the design of the lazaretto were a clearly defined perimeter enclosed by a high wall with minimal openings, isolating the structure from surrounding buildings and thus providing much needed security for trade goods. A spacious central courtyard facilitated the handling of merchandise, while there was historic space for the goods on the ground floor of adjacent buildings. There were ample living quarters for the merchants on the first floor. After Rodrigo abandoned the construction of the complex for financial reasons, the Republic of Venice took over the project. Soon afterwards, Venice invested in the construction of a larger, almost identical attached courtyard to the west of the existing complex, following the same spatial distribution. The buildings around the new courtyard had storage space on the ground floor, each with a separate entrance and a window, and above them on the first floor, rooms for merchants. A large table for horses was located on the fourth side of the spacious courtyard with a central water fountain. The new quadrangle served as a lodging for Ottoman merchants and travelers after undergoing quarantine. Considering that the Lazaretto in Split was supposed to serve primarily for the accommodation of Ottoman and Jewish merchants. A decision to erect an Ottoman caravan sarai seems natural and logical. Adapting the model of the Ottoman Han was part of a comprehensive enterprise conducting alongside the construction of roads and bridges meant to attract Ottoman merchants to split and make their stay more agreeable. Although most of the users of the Lazaretto were Ottoman merchants from Bosnia, Armenian and Greek merchants also stayed there due to the trade between the Ottoman Empire and Venice. As there was no hostel in the city, soon all travelers who found themselves in Split lodged there, sharing the same space. In this way, the institution of the Ottoman Han, not only in name and form, but also in its proper function, has successfully been shared and adapted across political and cultural borders in this interconnected region. I hope I was able to at least partially show you how the function of these early modern caravanserais was versatile, how their shape was pliable considering the location, the function, and the building materials. And finally, the importance that the caravanserai institution 
had in the history of Bosnia and this region in general. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Darka. Um, maybe we can sort of... Uh, Thank you, Tanka, uh, for this very interesting talk that took us on a journey from, you know, the 16th century up to at least the, the, the 19th. And uh, I, I was very interested about this, this notion of the centralization of the planning uh, of the urbanization from the part of the, of the central um, government in Istanbul as part of the process of, of integration of, of the Balkans within it. Um, and, and I was wondering, I, I mean, we have already a, a question in the chat, but if I can just quickly, I, I, I just was wondering about this construction. You mentioned that they also had the military function uh, or they were, you know, yes, they had a military function. So. I was wondering how did they work? I mean, did people have to have, um, you know, a kind of passport or, or uh, pass to, you know, I wonder whether you could say something a bit more about how easy it was to go through the various stages of, of, of a journey. Um, uh, you know, whether it's a trader, a merchant, so, or, uh, you know, whatever it was over this, this sort of type of, uh, of, uh, of journey. Thank you very much uh, for your questions and remarks. Um, yes, this, um, differences between um, mm, the involvement of uh, central government into development and urbanization of the uh, Bosnia uh, and also the, the um, amount of the uh, work that uh, local administrators and wealthy uh, people were doing in, uh, in the same direction is uh, great. But uh, there are documents that show that uh, central government was involved in some of the um, some of the developments, for example, when uh, especially those that were uh, very important uh, in the military sense, uh, when uh, when uh, fortress of Nadine in uh, hinterland of Zadar was uh, conquered by Ottomans, uh, Suleiman has written to the Doge of uh, of uh, Venice to uh, um, to ask for the stonemasons uh, and material to be uh, shipped to Nadine so that uh, the fortress and the place could be rebuilt. So it was, uh, everything was directed from, uh, uh, let's say, Istanbul from the center of the empire. Um, there are also, for example, um, um, evidence that um, construction of the fortress in Makarska was also uh, influence or uh, directed from, uh, from uh, Istanbul because the uh, architect Hairudin was uh, sent to uh, first in Mostar and then also to Makarska, uh, the Ottoman port on the Adriatic coast, uh, to uh, first to construct a bridge in uh, Mostar and then to, con um, to design a fortress in Makarska. So yeah, there are, uh, even though there are not so much as in other parts of the Ottoman Empire evidence of the contribution of the central government, but there are some of them and it would be really interesting if somebody could further develop uh, this uh, subject. Um, about the papers, about the uh, mechanism of the mobility on the, on the border and uh, uh, um, travel documents in Ottoman Empire, I'm not really sure. I'm not uh, uh, there. I know that there were um, papers and there were um, because um, 
Dubrovnik government government uh, in Dubrovnik was writing papers for some of the people who were there, people who were traveling uh, toward the uh, hinterland of Balkan, but uh, other travelers and the foreign foreign travelers for sure from the West had to have uh, papers uh, uh, because they traveled as the diplomats, but uh, the other merchants, uh, I really am not sure, uh, was there any uh, something uh, deliberate, uh, something organized? Uh, yeah, I, I was just thinking because it happens in other cultures. Yes. So yeah, thank, thank you very much. Um, we have something in the chat. So Diana Dark, uh, please, can you repeat the numbers you quoted from Halil Inalcek at the beginning about the numbers of Ottoman commercial structures? 232 caravans arise, question mark. Also, are any of the hands in use today in use today in some form? Thank you for your comprehensive survey. Uh, yes, I think, uh, yes, it wasn't 232 caravans arrived. It was, I think, uh, INS, uh, which would be like uh, Musafir Khane and uh, Imare together, all together with uh, Hans and caravans arrived, I think, uh, uh, put together as the number. So, yeah, because otherwise it would be like really, really, really uh, high number of uh, caravans arrived. Uh, that maybe something like that could have existed in 19th century after development for centuries of the road uh, infrastructure in Bosnia, but not uh, uh, not in 16th century only. So yeah, that would be um, my explanation of that uh, high number. Uh, or, and also the the the, the... Well, some, uh, are any of the hands in use today? Um, not that I know of, not the ones from the 15th and 16th century. Uh, the one I showed, for example, the one Mashkovic Ahan is uh, in use. Uh, yes, it was recently uh, reconstructed or let's say uh, put in use for the um, for the tourists. And so you can basically you can uh, go uh, on their site and book a room uh, and sleep in one of the rooms of a medresa. Uh, you can yeah book a vacation there in uh, hinterland. Yes, in uh, Marshkovich Hassan. Very nice. Yeah. Um, thank you. Then Haris Dervishevich. Uh, hello from Sarajevo, Darka. Thank you very much for the lecture. Giada Vercelli, the caravanserai was at the center of the cultural life of the Ragusa road and beyond, with merchants and scholars intermingling. I was wondering whether we have evidence of their impact on the local population. Could people travel not for business purposes, or was it frowned upon? Um, if so, did they need any special dispensation from the local administrators? Well, I don't have any, uh, I didn't encounter uh, in my research um, um, any, let's say, uh, the Westerners were, as I understand and what I uh, have read about, they, they felt uh, uh, as the strangers in a strange land, everything was strange with the, uh, for them, but they, I think also, they were very welcomed and uh, there weren't any, um, limits who can travel and where can travel. So the only limit was the security because I think uh, the bandits were on the roads. So you really had to be uh, careful where and how you're traveling uh, and to have a guard or somebody uh, to be accompanied with. But otherwise, I, I don't think so. No. Thank you, also, Jada also adds, thank you very much for a very interesting and well illustrated lecture. And Caroline Mauer, uh, please, can you say any more about the water supply for the caravanserais? Was it piped in, uh, like local springs? Did Sokolo Mehmed Pasha build any mosques, madrasas in this area alongside the caravanserais as beautiful as those he made in Istanbul? Um. 
which mm. have water supply for the carbon yeah. rice. For example, um, uh, Han, Mashkovica Han was built uh, very close to the stream. Uh, so um, basically the, the, um, one of the arguments for its position, uh, where it's positioned now is because of there is a stream of water which is entering from the uh, northeast, uh, on the northeast corner of the Han. And it was distributed with the clay pipes, pipes and stone pipes in uh, throughout the perimeter of the uh, um, of the Han, so all over on the um, in uh, in the building in the complex uh, throughout. So yes, um, um, so they they were using stone pipes and uh, 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 clay pipes to distribute the water. Um, the only information that I have. Also, we know that. Uh, um, there are there, there were fountains as I mentioned, and but we don't know anything about them. Uh, there are lot, there there are no uh, um, uh, any physical remains of the Hans and caravans so it's very difficult to um, analyze them in a, such a detail and to know such a detailed information. Unfortunately, some some more research needs to be done. Thank you. Uh, Valerie Gonzalez, do the documents specify what existed in the urban fabric before the constructions of the hands? What type of architecture was destroyed to make room for them? In, uh, in uh, Pastrasia district in Sarajevo, I think uh, nothing existed on that part of the, the, the river. Uh, and uh, Kolobara Han, for example, was the first building that Isabel Sakovic built on that part of the uh, river uh, to uh, be the intention to bring uh, uh, other uh, uh, settlers and to develop that side of the rim, make it a commercial uh, part. So, um, you know, and for the other Hans uh, that were built later in the 16th century, uh, probably some shops, uh, because that was a, a commercial district, but uh, uh, I don't know anything. There were uh, archeological uh, work was done, um, excavations on uh, Tashlihan, in uh, remains of Tashlihan uh, in Sarajevo, but they found some walls, but uh, the results were inconclusive. And uh, Maximilian Hartmut has sent a, a link that you may want to look at later. Thank and you. Simon O'Meara, uh, thank you for casting such an interesting light on a part of the Ottoman Empire that I, for one, know too little about. My question concerns the place of Ottoman architectural culture in the Balkans today. The Han of Rana and the Morika Han look highly restored who pays for this restoration and why? So for Morica Han, uh, the restoration was paid by uh, funds from uh, European Union uh, because uh, it was a part, of, so I think, of the uh, funds that were um, released for the development of the local population, of the local um, of community. So, uh, to rejuvenate uh, that area. So the European Union gave the money and it was restored and it's now in function. Morica Han is still, I think, in a, it's the property of Gazi Husre Bey and Vakuf, and they pay for the uh, restoration of Morica Han. They also, I think now, they were thinking about making a, another restoration and uh, because all the rooms on the upper floor are um, rented to different institutions and, and, and the individuals. They are not living there, but those are the small businesses, for example, uh, uh, lawyers, uh, they have their office there and so on. So instead, they were thinking about uh, making a hotel of uh, Mori Chahan, at least on its first floor. It's a uh, Gazi Hutter Bex Vakuf. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other questions or, or points? 
otherwise I say thank you very much Darka for this very stimulating talk uh, opens up a lot of different questions and this is the last Resia of the academic year so thank you Darka for concluding <laughs> the program and I will uh, send you a, 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 a program for, for for next uh, session from September very soon. And um, thank you for participating and, and I'll see you in, in the autumn. And thank you again, um, Darka. Applause. Thank, you. thank applause. you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>